Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, welcome to the Paranormal Portal. I'm your host, Brent Thomas, and we are at it again. This is our Friday night two-hour show, and we're absolutely thrilled all you guys are here with us. Thank you so much for spending your sacred Friday evenings right here nestled into the bosom of the Paranormal Portal. Um, <laughs> not even sure what the hell that means, but it sounded good. It just meant to be a warm, snuggly feeling. But anyway, uh, we got a phenomenal show lined up for you guys tonight. This will be a Paranormal Portal first, ladies and gentlemen. This is a topic we've touched, we've discussed to a degree, but we've never dedicated an entire show to the topic of giants. And here... To help lead us through this, uh, the myriad of possibilities and uh, potentials is TFR's own Ra Castaldo, who is joining us tonight. Uh, Ra, are you there? I'm here, Brent. What's going on, buddy? How's it going? Not too bad, brother. I'm not seeing your camera, though, so um, I don't know where, where it went. Or... Okay, let me see. Okay, because <laughs> then I can put you up on screen for those in YouTube to check it out, too. I thought I was on camera. Oh, no. Uh, it hasn't come up yet. Weirdness here on the there portal. We here yeah, we go. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Yep. I can see it's loading up. There you are. Now he's on screen, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get the man up here as well. Welcome to the show, brother. Here we go, brother. I'm lighting the stage. Later in the air. Cleansing the... Thank you for joining me tonight, Brent. I'm really happy to be able to spend some time with your audience and, and maybe, you know... Go a little bit deeper if someone has ever gone to this topic before for some of your audience out there. Sure. Hey, your mic is kind of diving up and down, up and down, so. Is this better? No, maybe. you got to say a little more than that. I'm here. I'm here. How's it going? I think, right? Yeah, I think that's oh, better. Okay. All right. Maybe because I was, I was leaning. Okay, a little bit, a little bit laggy, but that's all right, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to get into the the phenomenon of giants tonight, and Ra, this is a story as old as time. The story of giants, the the inclusion of them in our world and in our folklores, in our legends, and uh, in our histories. And you know, I guess where does this all start? I know you've done a lot of research on this and have looked into it pretty extensively. What have you found? I mean, I don't know how my if my mic is coming in clear enough. Can you hear me clear now? Uh, a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, it's it's still a little faint, but it's okay. I think I, I'm EQing you up as much as I can. Let me see if... Uh, there you go. Let me see if I take it off. Let me see if I take... Let me see if that works. Is this better? Whoa. Is, is this coming in clearer now? Yeah, that's much louder, yep. Yeah? Yeah. All right. I hope I don't know if it's going to be as good as quality, but it's not. It's not my regular mic, so it's, it's the mic that. I don't know if it's as good as quality, but hopefully you guys can hear me. Yep, we can hear you now. So where uh, where does this start, brother? I'm, let's get, I uh, spent decades. You know, I'm in my early 40s now, Brent, and spent decades researching this topic. When it's to this topic, as far as I'm concerned, if you go, if you start digging deep enough. Uh, from the lineage, just from the lineage I'm from, and from my background, I was already born with knowledge of otherworldly creatures, otherworldly beings, spirits, um, uh, all, all sorts of star beings. You know, is it is it still cutting out? Nope, you're you're pretty solid now, so I think we're good. Oh wow, because in the chat room they were saying it was cutting out. Oh yeah, I think that might have been a lag though from the earlier. All right, all right, cool. So all right, cool. I just want to make sure, but yeah, so. You know, as a as a child, I I definitely was starting to have experiences with the paranormal, and at a young age, I started diving deep into researching about ghosts, mm -hmm. uh, researching about spirits, researching about all of all of this thing, and eventually, um, through biblical studies and through researching other religions, you find knowledge of the giants or the fallen angels, mm -hmm. and this is, in my opinion where all paranormal activity on our planet, uh, demonic activity, magic, witchcraft, sorcery, uh, sex magic, artificial intelligence, just the, the cameras, the TVs, you know, everything that we're using right now to talk, this is where this intelligence comes from, is these, these fallen angels, watchers, or what we would call in my Italian background, the Gregori. Now, oh. these bloodlines, 
if you if you go back into biblical research and look into even if you want to take it just to the Bible, uh, they talk about in Genesis six how basically beings came down they call sons of God or fallen angels watchers mm -hmm. Grigori they came down from another dimension another world and entered into our existence on this physical plane and however you want to look at it they either mated with human females or they did some sort of genetic engineering okay um, or it, it might it, in my opinion from my research it's a little bit of, of both, okay. uh, and, and we can go deeper on that. And um, so in, in the Bible, they call this species the Nephilim. Mm -hmm. Now, the Nephilim are these, like, uh, hybrid fallen angel human-type beings, and they were giants. They were huge, and some of them were even tall as cedars, they say, when they first, some of the first ones on this planet. It could go back to, like, ancient Lemuria, ancient Atlantis, some of the first beings that ever walked this earth. You know, and they would, some of them, they say, were as tall as cedars. Mm. And, you know, they were, they were just monsters. Now, these bloodlines, some of them called the dragon bloodlines, these are the same very bloodlines that are possibly controlling our media, controlling our world today, the, the, the bloodlines of the elite. And they have been controlling and, and waiting to, to rise again and, and populate this planet again with this species that was pretty much wiped out in the major flood. And now they talk about other giants that still survived after the flood. Mm. And they were clans that they call in the Bible called the, the Rephaim. Rephaim. Now, these are all like watered-down bloodlines of these, these ancient huge giants. And, and in the Bible, they have some of the Rephaim. Like, um, I, I guess, in my opinion, they could get polarized to be either good or bad. Okay. Some of them are the darkest of the dark, the most horrific monsters you can find. And it's embedded in our belief system and embedded in our very culture and our nursery rhymes to this very day. Mm -hmm. I mean, even their abilities, Brett. Um, I'm talking like uh, you, everybody knows of Jack and the Beanstalk and, and nursery rhymes. They fee fi fo fum I smell the blood of an Englishman or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's supposedly that they, had, they were such huge creatures that they had such a heightened sense of ability that they could smell the blood, the, the iron in the blood. They could smell the different, uh, different kinds of blood of, uh -huh. of humanity and people, and they could search them out, you know, and they would be able just to sniff people out and what's in their blood and what's in their DNA and their genetic memory and everything about them. Even sniff the gold beneath the, the ground and, and where water is and, and be able to find things that is beyond our comprehension. Mm -hmm. Now, in the Bible, they talk about... Uh, Certain Rephaim, like people, most in the mainstream today have heard of Goliath, of course. Sure. Well, there's one uh, that's talked about in the Bible that, that pretty much got sort of swept beneath the carpet uh, for many years and now has sort of resurfaced in the last decade or so um, is King Og. Oh. And King Og was one of the last, if not the last, of the Rephaim that we have in recorded history. Um, I mean, even to this day, though, there, there are rumors of these giants hiding in caves in Afghanistan, and, and our military had, had to battle them. Um, and, uh, you know, we could talk about that even, even later on. Because, yeah. uh, there, you, could, you could find that on the Internet or find that on YouTube. Um, soldiers that were interviewed by L.A. Marzulli and, and other people. Um, now, it could be a hoax. It could be uh, them doing a dramatization of a real story, maybe, mm -hmm. is what I think. But uh, it, it does exist, in my opinion, and, and even the research of these beings brings up nightmares. It can bring um, paranormal activity to you. It can bring all sorts of uh, night terrors and uh, you being frozen in fear and, and, and weird whispers. Now, because the, what they say in the Bible about you know, them coming down and being able to mate with human females or mix their DNA with female, human females and create these races, now, I do believe... Over time, um, when this happened, there was some sort of genetic engineering that happened on our planet, Brent. And this is where we have these goddess-type figures like Lilith, who, mm. who were like mothers of the giants or mothers of demons. Uh -huh. And in my opinion, they're creating a hybrid race through uh, basically invading dream time and invading uh, the astral you know, biofield of humanity. Mm -hmm. they, they invade first your consciousness 
and they can literally embed themselves within you. And um, for my research, and we can go deeper into um, certain places on our planet and, and actual documents and take a backup from some of my theories and, and some of the history that I'm talking about, uh, is that these Rephaim had a problem with childbirth. They had a problem of continuing their, their race on the planet. Uh -huh. And it seems that the earthborn ones that perished and died became disembodied spirits on our planet. And that's what we see as demons uh -huh. and all of these, uh, you know, demonic demons on our planet. Mm. That's pretty deep, man. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> this is typical raw. I mean, you come in and you hit the ground running, brother. I mean, you just hit the ground running, but well, well man, it goes so deep, Rex. I mean, uh, Brent. I'm sorry, I called you Rex. That's because I'm going on. I'm from the Leak Project. I called oh. you Rex. Uh, it goes so deep, Brent, that uh, it's it's intense because I, I, our military. It seems that wars were built around getting rid of knowledge of these beings. Um, the place in, in Laos called Plain of Jars, this is right outside of Vietnam, Laos, mm -hmm. that area. There's, sure. a, there's a, a megalithic area that I don't know if it runs for miles or how, how long it is, but it's called the Plain of Jars. Okay. And they have these sort of, uh, I guess they're, some of them might be granite, some of them might be limestone. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what they're all made of, but they're these like megalithic jars. Mm -hmm. uh, that some of them have symbols on them, all sorts of weird symbolism that look like uh, almost sigils. Uh -huh. And uh, some of them are still stuck in the ground. Some of them have been blown apart. Um, these were the plane of jars. These were possibly, uh, well, the, especially the lore of that area say they were made by giants. And I believe they were they were doing some sort of uh, sex magic sorcery or some sort of uh, sorcery with these jars. Mm -hmm. And they were putting... Uh, humans in them, uh, sort of like soul containers, oh. and building stone circles around these these jars, like Stonehenge, and like we see even in the Middle East with Golan Heights, and and it seems that as soon as we start wars, we go after these places, oh. and in Laos at these plain of jars, we literally bombed that area every few minutes for years. For years, where people, if they walk there now, there's still like landmines there. They still, you can still see the shells. Like we literally littered this area with bombs during the Vietnam War. Now, people weren't living there. You know, there there was no. What's the reason for doing that? Right. You know, the, and and why that specific area, right? Mm -hmm. And we did the same thing in Desert Storm during the 80s with Golan Heights. Golan Heights, if, if you've never heard of it, Brent, is like the Middle East. Stonehenge. They're, okay. you know, circles of, of stones that are basically like called the giant's circle or circles of giants. And just like Stonehenge, Stonehenge's original name or Stonehenge means the giant's dance. You know, that's what it basically, that, that means, that circle, the dance of giants. Uh -huh. um, you know, the, so they were doing some sort of, uh, I guess you could call sex magic sorcery to help with their procreation. And I feel that there, 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 there was a real problem with childbirth. And, and if you look in the ancient documents, um, and some of them have resurfaced over the last few years that they found in Qumran with the Dead Sea Scrolls, like the Lost Book of King Og, and um, you know the Book of Lamech of Cain, and the Book of Enoch, all of these books that were sort of the Apocrypha, all these books that were sort of taken out of the Bible sure. and uh, sort of uh, removed from our history. Um, even the Book of Enoch. In the only place you can really find it in the in the canonized version of the Bible is in Ethiopia. Ethiopia is the only place that still keeps it within their like canon. Uh -huh. But uh, I mean, you could you could find the Book of Enoch nowadays, but it's not in our regular Bible. It was removed, and this is where we have all the knowledge and elaboration of Genesis six with the Nephilim. And uh, you know, they have this one line in in Genesis six that that leaves you with with so much wondering of what these Nephilim could be. And little spots in the Bible, they have little, you know, hints of, of what the Rephaim and when Moses sent Moses sent people to to spy on them, and and they, and they felt as small as grasshoppers um, to these large beings. Now, there's a place in the Middle East called Bashan, and Bashan is uh, like the ancient Syria area. This is a place of of, of 
historic, uh, like with the with Nimrod and, and every all, all biblical history goes back to this area. So it's, it's the area like where the Tower of Babel, Tower of Babel was, and, sure. and all of this. There's there's a place um, even called uh, like Og's Temple, I think, or in Baalbek. You know, they have like a Temple of Og, and and uh, this whole area and, and Bashan was uh, a place where these clan of Rephaim once lived, and King Og ruled. Mm-hmm. And this place is pretty intense, uh, um, Brent, because listen to this. Like, if you, if you go back into history um, and you start to look at the, the, the origins of, and the names of some of the towns of this area, these areas, like uh, where Bashan is, you know, even, even here, what is it called? I have it written here. Um, the actual name of the old name of the city was Ashtaroth Quarnaim. Now, Ashtaroth basically means, if you break it down, um, or a, a, another name for it is a starte. Ashtaroth and a starte are like the same name. And it basically comes from the term womb. It basically means like womb, and uh, or that which issues from a womb, or comes from the womb. Mm-hmm. And this is usually the names of all of these towns are about um, the stargate of the woman, um, you know, bringing... Uh, birth and and using a sex magic uh evil sorcery basically to uh a, so, sort of like a dark magic sorcery to to create um uh what they would call a moon child oh. and first to create a moon child you would have to create a demonic brood of spiritual children through sex magic and when you generate enough energy and the, and and you build a powerful enough army within the spiritual realms a physical birth eventually can happen within the womb. And the bu- mother gives birth to some of what they would call like a, a, an avatar or some sort of like a hybrid creature. Mm-hmm. And this is where sex magic comes from on our planet today. This is where Aleister Crowley, Jack Parsons, all of these people, even um, L. Ron Hubbard, all of these people, um, and, and stemmed all the way down to the Satanism, even into the people that, uh, that are in today, like the Temple of Set, and, and, and all of these, uh, you know, black, black, dark Satanist people, even uh, the Process Church that, in my opinion, uh, and we could get even deeper into this, that is linked to all the serial killers on, on this planet, from the Son of Sam to the, uh, um, the Zodiac Killer to the, the Monster of Florence, uh, all of these serial killers that were um, basically killing somebody while they were in the act of having sexual energy generated. Okay. You know, in my opinion, this is all related to these sex, magic, and fertility cults that stems from the giants. It mm-hmm. stems from all of this. You know, if you look into the Book of Enoch, um, they talk about how hundreds of fallen angels made a pact on Mount Hermon and came down into this realm. And each one of them taught humanity a different thing. And Semyaza. Um, another name for Semyaza is also Azazel, or uh, even Semael, mm-hmm. same being, even related to Satan. You know, uh, this is what gave sorcery and witchcraft and magic on our planet. You know, this is what injected that information into the consciousness of humanity, and this is where we have this on our planet, and this is where all this this knowledge and, and activity stems from is is from the lineage of the giants. Wow. Yeah, so they've they, they've left a big footprint in a lot of different ways. Then, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said, even with the 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 fee fi fo fum, right, and and all of this, and you know, those nursery rhymes, they they seem harmless, but all of these uh, these stories, they stem from something. They stem from the ancestral memory of who we are, and, that... and it, it goes back all the way to the. Adam, you know, Adam, I believe uh, in, in, the, in the Bible, even in the book of Enoch, you know, he might have been uh, a giant, like a huge being mm. that we can't even fathom how big the, the Adam was, the original, you know, the, the, one of the, the, the first ones of these giants. And, you know, if you look into even like Catholicism or, or Greek Catholicism, like uh, Greek Orthodox churches, they have St. Christopher. Right, Saint Christopher might have been from the clan of, of one of these Rephaim. Yeah, the dog, um, dog and face, some right? of these clans were like dogmen yeah. type. Mm-hmm. You know. Yep. And uh, Saint Christopher 
supposedly helped Christ cross across across the river, you know, baby, the baby Christ. And he's depicted as like a werewolf type, you know, mm-hmm. uh, yep. what someone calls sinocephaly yep. or, uh, you know, Marco Polo, all sorts of explorers, Pliny, Herodotus, all of these guys wrote of these, these hybrid beings. And, you know, in, in the Book of Enoch, they elaborate on this. They don't, they don't say the fallen angels just uh, mixed their DNA with human females. They also did it with reptiles and, and all creatures. Mm-hmm. They, so it's like it, it's some sort of genetic engineering. And, you know, that one of the biggest topics that this leads to is uh, Lilith. And, you know, I don't know if I ever shared it with you, Brent, personally, but um, one of the things that led me to research the mother of, of these giants and, and find out what would give birth to, to these sort of creatures. Right. This is where we have the Virgin Mary and um, uh, stories of the Virgin Mary and Isis and all of these mother goddess figures. This is what Ashtaroth is. This is what even the the mother of Ashtaroth they would call in, in ancient Syria or Ugaritic tablets. Um, Ugaritic writing is like ancient Syrian writing. It's a uh, cuneiform, basically. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like ancient type writing. And they talk about the mother of these giants. Like uh, one of her names is Asherah and Anath. And Anath is basically like, uh, she's called the Lady of the Sea, the Lady of the Heavens. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. and the Marian basically is the ver- you know the it, it means Lady of the Sea, to be Marian the the Marian you know the Virgin Mary, and the Lady uh, of the Sea Ashtaroth and, and Anath they are the mother of giants they are always called Lady of the Sea and they are always called the the Virgin the Virgin Lady of the Sea it's the same uh, mother goddess type figure that has been passed down through religions and and passed down over time and this is where we have the the, the stories of the Virgin Mary um, to today and, and you know it, it's been it's been taken from that it's it's, it's, it's another name for Isis it's another name for um, all of these goddess type figures like Astarte and Anath and um, it's, it's very interesting I don't, I don't know if you want to comment on that you want me to go deeper into that because it, it leads us to Lilith and Nama and the mother of these giants, and how they they create these like demonic brood of children within the astral realms, sure. you know, literally taking the seed of mankind and then hijacking the wombs of women. So what you're what you're saying is that the, our understanding of the Virgin Mary is actually uh, some uh, reference to these this ancient being. In in, in some aspects, uh, like with, with Roman Catholic. Catholicism has adopted as the Virgin Mary, because uh, originally, what is the Virgin Mary? Uh, she gives birth to this avatar-type being, Christ, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And she's supposedly, even though she gives birth, she's still a virgin, right? And this is the same tale that we have of Anath, mm-hmm. you know, thousands of years before. And and Anath, also an Egyptian, was the wife of Set or Seth mm-hmm. in ancient Egyptian, and she was the the the, the you know the wife of of, of uh, basically Satan, you know, sure. basically a, a demonic type of uh, godlike figure. Right. And their 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 original parents were um, Asherah and El. In in ancient Ugaritic tablets in ancient Syria, that area, they have the two supreme gods. The mm-hmm. chief god was called El, which basically means um, like uh, God. El E L basically means God. Like, so when you have these archangels and angels or watchers or Gregory, like we call them in Italy, or, or Greek, we call Gregory, a lot of them are called like Raphael or Samael or Mikael or Gabriel. You know, they, they have, that means like of God. You okay. know, it's, it's the name of God. Like, they'll be like, you know, the Gabriel is like whatever the, the gay part means of God. You know, it's like Gabe of God. So it's like, uh, you know, one of their children is, is of course, Anath and Astarte, but also Baal, or Baal, B-A-A-L. And mm-hmm. Baal basically means bull El, the bull god, bull god, you know, and he's the god of the two horns. And uh, supposedly, um, you know, in ancient Egyptian tablets, they have this sadistic 13th century B.C. tablet that has this sadistic portrayal of when Set deflowers Anath on the seashore, 
and she ba he basically takes her virginity um, during like her period, and uh, you know this is this crazy depiction. I mean, which is uniquely descript like uniquely very descriptive mm -hmm. for that time period in these tablets. It's it's pretty intense, and they talk about these like basically sex magic rituals that were taking place by these these otherworldly beings, mm. you know, and uh, Anath it was interestingly, uh, in interestingly, she was called um, the woman who uh, can, uh, what was it, she, she can, she can get pregnant, but she could not bear or something like that. I think I have it written down here on the notes that I have here somewhere. Well, we're going to go to our first break, ladies and gentlemen. One half hour is done, and we got an hour and a half left to go. So buckle up, get a break. I'm unloading. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, we'll meet you right back here in just a couple minutes. Don't go away.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are in half hour number two already. The first half hour just sprinted by, uh, as you are aware if you were here. Uh, our guest tonight is Mr. Ra Castaldo, a uh, fellow TFR host and uh, knowledgeable man. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a reference machine. I'm telling you, brother, you're just you're spitting facts out like Pez. It's just crazy. Well, you know, it's it's because <laughs> when you start to talk about this this these sort of topics, mm -hmm. um, you could sound like a, a crazy man to some people, right? Oh, so you can't sure. talk about the average uh, to the average person about Nephilim and giants and sure. you know genetic engineering and fallen angels, sex magic, this stuff. You know, the average person doesn't want to even go there even if they they might believe in it they they don't want to even fathom that that might exist and 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 um at, at a young age i got experienced to some dark dark mm -hmm. things sure. and um i needed answers i was a very smart kid mm -hmm. i had high iq and uh things happened to me that that i nobody could explain to me so i had to explain it for myself sure and you know to this very day i still create tools to guard myself from these beings and and mm -hmm from uh, this sort of activity because when it's ingrained within your DNA and your ancestral memory and who you are and you come out of the womb basically believing in the supernatural or paranormal or, or um, you know, psychic phenomena or psychic abilities, it's just a normal way of life, yeah. then these things materialize. You believe in them, they, 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 they're there. Yeah. You know, just like um, in Hasidic or Kabbalistic and Jewish um, history and the Dybbuk exists, and the Dybbuk exists because of the belief in the Dybbuk, and, and because it's so ingrained within their ancestral memory that it, it can actually manifest and become really potent, oh, sure. especially if, if, if it's believed in and, and within the ancestral memory. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe this is where all of this stems from. And uh, I'm going to share something with you that, that's pretty intense. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, before we, we go get into the story, um, I forgot to mention that, the, you know, these giants, um, supposedly there's there's certain bloodlines that are related to them, like the red hair and green-eyed uh, mm -hmm. DNA and genetic uh, traits, um, and the blonde hair, blue eye, green eye, that they're, they're sort of like, this is where some of these traits come from. And, and certain clans of giants were known as the red-haired giants, sure. or even the blonde Nordic giants. And King Og was one of the redhead, and Lilith was said to be this red-headed goddess, right? Mm. Now, um, as a child... Um, I got experienced to something that, that made me look into what a topic that led me to Lilith and led me to the mother of giants. And there was this family that I grew up with that um, their next door neighbors, um, that, that there was a tragedy involved in that family. Oh. And um, this, this lady next door, she was like a second mother to me. I grew up with her children. And her brother was brutally slaughtered by his wife and she killed the two children oh, no. as well oh. and uh so listen to this this is what happened uh they were a normal family they had literally the white picket fence um the guy's name was ed rotella and they had a lot of money in my area right outside of new york city in a uh, suburban area right outside of new york city and he this guy had like a million dollar construction company and the construction company was called keel K-E-E-L, you know, and that, that was after the name of his family. His, his, his children's name was Kyle, Edward Jr., um, Edward Sr., and his wife, Lily. L and her name was Lillian, right? Really close to Lilith. Right. And uh, their children were these two beautiful, curly, bright, red-headed children. And I, they, they were next door to me. You know, we played all the time. Mm -hmm. I was, and in, um, in 1988, I was 10 years old. And the children at the time were seven and four, or seven and three. And so they were a little younger than me, but I always was around them. We, we just spent Thanksgiving together. We had Thanksgiving dinner together. Mm -hmm. And then December of 1988, the mother starts having this psychotic break. Mm -hmm. And she was telling people the Virgin Mary was coming to her in these, like, ecstasy-type visions. But the Virgin Mary was coming to her and telling her to do evil. Like, it literally hurt her family um, and send the family to heaven, to the Virgin Mary, right? Oh, dear and uh, so Christmas was just, was coming, and they were they didn't want to ruin the holiday, so they were like, she's, she's, she's not getting better. She's, she's having these little psychotic breaks. What do we do? So they took her to the, the, the psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. The psychiatrist 
didn't want to put her away for the holidays. They, they said she was going to be okay, right? And they gave her this, like, tranquilizer, and they sent her home. She never fulfilled the subscription. And on Christmas Eve, 1988, she drugged her husband at dinner. Oh. She stabbed him in the, the, in the back, right through the heart, in, in, while he was sleeping. And then she took the two red-headed children to the sauna and smothered them and oh. drowned them. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, um, then she, like, they were all naked. She laid them in bed together. And then she stabbed herself in the abdomen and left the, uh, uh, several times she stabbed herself and then left the knife there. And then her mother found her the next morning and came running to our house screaming, oh, you know, uh, on Christmas Day. You know, what, uh, it was oh. Christmas Eve when it happened, 1988, right? So uh, um, she ends up getting arrested, right? Um, she was, had this whole note there. Oh, do we lose you? Are you still there? We might have lost them. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to... Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Are you there? We just... Went... Out for a second, huh? Yeah, we got a real big leg spike all of a sudden, so... Um, well, are you okay now? So... so we're not... Hold on. We're, yeah. we're not quite back yet. Um, we're still getting a big leg spike here, so just hold a second. Um, yeah. I'm just going to look at things here and see what's going on, but... You're, you're still lagging. Um, we'll get this sorted, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry. The portal will always continue. This is just par for the course here. It never happens on my show like this. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Yeah, I it's... wonder if it's the internet or, or what's going on. Well, I'm in the north Idaho, so I mean, I'm pretty sure that our internet is just basically repurposed telegraph line, but uh, I could be wrong. It's, it's, it's not always real. I, you know, I don't usually have trouble, but sometimes these things do come up. And uh, I think we're okay now. I can see you moving. Good. I hope so. So you said that on Christmas morning she came over screaming, and then what happened? Yeah. So um, there was this note there, um, you know, about the Virgin Mary, all this stuff. The mother survived. Oh, but, of dear. course, she butchered her whole family. And she had this note there. They arrested her, and she got this uh, lawyer who ended up defending me 20 years later when I got a drug charge or a marijuana charge. Oh, my God. <laughs> my, my dad ended up getting the same lawyer when I got arrested, right? So, um, but uh, he, she got this lawyer, and uh, she, you know, and it, she had all this money from his company, from her husband's company, and the lawyer ended up getting her a plea of insanity, and she was out within seven years at the psych hospital. Now she has her name changed, and she's remarried. It's crazy, dude. So, first of all, her name was Lillian, right? Yep very close to Lilith, and she had red-headed children that she smothered. And she was seeing the Virgin Mary coming to her in dreams, seeing the Virgin Mary was talking to her, angels were talking to her, you know, these giant creatures were talking to her and telling her to, to bring her children to, to the Virgin Mary and bring her children to heaven. Now, what's, what's intense is that at, the, at that age, uh, and, and it was in 1988, the year prior, 1987, I had a new uh oh, you, you, you said 1987. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec, brother. You, you were breaking up again. Oh my uh, God. Yes, it's frustrating when this stuff happens, and there's not much I can do about it. It's just oh, man, we're at the mercy of the AI. <laughs> you know, I often wonder about that, to be honest with you, because it's really peculiar when we get problems. Um, sometimes it seems like there's an intelligence about it, but. That might be me just imposing a lot of my own thinking on it, but no, I agree with you. Yeah, it's, I agree with you completely. It's literally disturbing how it comes up and where it comes up, and uh, it's it's maddening to say the least. But okay, go ahead. 1987. Yeah. So the uh, everybody. Yeah. So like in 1987, right before that, I had a near death experience that uh, I was seeing things in a different way. And when this happened, the whole Virgin Mary story and, and me being so close to the family, um, I knew something like supernatural, something otherworldly was taking place, that it wasn't just the mother had a psychotic breakdown, Mm -hmm. that there was something more to this, that um, even though she deserved to be in prison for the rest of her life, and, or, or, I don't know, I don't know if I believe in death penalty, you know, maybe, maybe child killers like that and child molesters, maybe they, maybe, maybe, maybe I do believe in death penalty, I don't know, I don't know, it's a a touchy subject, but 
she at least deserved to be locked up for the rest of her life. But mm -hmm. that being a aside, I do believe the verdict was partly correct that she was she did go crazy. Oh yeah. But it was she was she was crazy because of of some sort of demonic infestation. I knew it wasn't just uh, her imagination that there was something otherworldly to this. And I started doing dig digging at a very young age, um, like ten years old, in into things like this. And eventually, I came across. The mother of giants, the mother of a demonic brood of of evil children, the succubus, the 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 goddess who has reached like uh, almost like goddess type levels and uh, like super famous within the occult and within media now is the name Lilith. Mm -hmm. Now Lilith is this red haired goddess type figure, mm -hmm. but if you go back into ancient Hebrew tales and in Kabbalistic lore in the Zohar. And even in um, the Midrash, um, uh, the the Quran, all, all these places, um, the alphabet of Ben Sira, um, uh, all of these old tablets, uh, they, they talk about Lilith. Mm -hmm. And um, Lilith, basically, uh, one aspect of her is the child killer. And um, in some of these tales, she was rejected by the cherubim, these, these, these like... Uh, you know, they're, they're angelic-type creatures. Yep. They're called the small faces in, in some of these ancient writings, and especially within the say, ancient Hebrew writings, they're, they're, they, they call the cherubim the, the small faces. That's the way they reference them. And you'll see them depicted sort of like, uh, almost like a sphinx, sort of like a, a small type of angelic type of creature with wings and almost like a human-type creature, but, but, but a, a, with animal wings, okay. sort of like... And, and uh, supposedly Lilith is part screech owl, part cherubim, and part maybe fallen angel type creature, and maybe even part human. Mm. You know, so she, she may be this hybrid creature. And, uh, you know, screech owl is, uh, always links back to Lilith as well, and, and the term Strix. Um, and, and it goes back even to the term Strega of ancient Italy that, that I'm related to, it is the, the symbol of the screech owl. And Lilith goes hand in hand with with the owl, and you'll see pictures of ancient Samaria of like the goddess Inanna, um, and and uh, all of these uh, ancient goddesses that sometimes they're depicted with uh, the same things as Lilith, and Lilith is sometimes shown with screech owls as well. But Lilith is known as the child killer, and Lilith basically goes into our world, um, and seeks out children, and she sees the children of mankind. And she attaches herself to their very souls. Um, and she, she basically kills them, like draws them in with a smile, mm -hmm. and smothers them and drowns them. You know? and, and her headquarters is deep beneath the sea. And uh, it says that she comes from deep beneath the sea, and then she invades the, the, the minds of children, and she takes children and smothers children and takes them and, and kills them. Wow. And she basically, uh, yeah, and, and this is exactly what happened to this, this family, you know. This is exactly she, she, what she did. She took the children in with a smile and smothered them. And there were these red-headed children, and she was seeing the Virgin Mary, you know. And the Virgin Mary is described almost in these tablets like the matronate. And the matronate or the matron is goes hand in hand with the Shekinah and Lilith of ancient Hebrew lore. And they go hand in hand, and, 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 and they, there's different aspects of the matron or the matron or the Shekinah. And one of them is the bloodthirsty war goddess of, of the, you know, of, of the goddess. This is the, the bloodthirsty war, like the Kali version of the goddess. Mm. And there's, you know, the goddess figure is, is basically like a tetrad. There's like four aspects. You have the virgin, you have the, the, the mother, wife, queen, goddess. You have the the promiscuous, sexual, seductive one, and then you have the 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 like the crone, and, and you know the the the, uh, the the other guy, you know, like so. There's like all these different aspects, like and the and the the, the war, you know, the crone. The, the older part is like the the one part is the the seductress part. I mean, is like the bloodthirsty war part, like Kali, you know, of the Hindu, is where she's depicted as this like, you know, be beheading people, drinking blood. And this is where the, the you know some of these giants um, come from. Is this is activity and Lilith, you know, 
there's different aspects of Lilith, and it goes back into the succubus and, and the incubus and all of this, and it, it's uh, it's pretty intense how, how the media even uses it. You, you see it in, in sitcoms. You see it in, in movies. They're depicting it. Mm. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, you know, I got I to gotta wonder. I, I, I know it's, it sounds to me like you're really drawing uh, a lot of parallels between other cultures into this as yeah. well. And, and I, you could be right and you could be wrong on that. I don't know what to think personally. Um, not that I'm disagreeing with you because I know that you have certainly dedicated a lot more of your life researching this than I ever have or will. But, um, I, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, what, now who was, who was the first bride of Adam before Eve? Wasn't that, uh, what was her name? Well, Lilith right. is, That's is what known I to be one of the first brides of Adam, and, and, but not if you're a Christian. You know, uh, well, Christian would not. Christians and and Catholics would not sure. say that. Right. Um, that would come from more of a, a Judaism or a Kabbalistic background, or even a Muslim background. Sometimes sure. would believe that, and and then uh, Lilith basically uh, also had another husband called Samael. Mm-hmm. And Samael injected the slime also into Eve when they raped Eve. And uh, that's what they talk about in the Jewish lore. And, and that's what they believe Cain came from in Judaism. Now, cer- certain Christianities don't believe in this serpent seed of, mm-hmm. that Cain came from that way. But in, in some cultures, like in, in Hebrew, certain Kabbalistic texts, they believe that, that Cain, the bloodline of Cain, came from when Eve was injected with the, the, the slime the evil seed of, uh, of, uh, Samael. Mm, and okay. this would be, you know, what, what created those, those, those bloodlines. And, and, but it's, it's, there's a big debate going on between religions about that, you know, oh, of, sure. of the origin of some of these bloodlines. But no. I mean, if you look at it, there's the, it's the goddess of a thousand names, Brent. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I'm not saying anybody to believe what I'm saying. I'm saying if do your digging, and right. You'll you'll see. You'll come to certain conclusions eventually. Uh, if, if if you don't want to believe me, I hope I intrigue you enough to do your own research, and to look into it and, and to find that uh you know that it's, it's it's there's a goddess of a thousand names whether you call her Isis or uh, Marion or Mary or if you call her you know Astarte or Friga or Hecate or all of these names, they all stem from the same beings. They all come mm-hmm. from these same creatures and same tales. They're just different areas have a different flavor or a different name for them. You know, just like when you have um, the mystery of the tarot, you know, um, you have the ancient Egyptian mystery schools, but you also have, um, you know, the Phoenicians that, that sailed and, and went to islands like Malta and Sicily mm-hmm. and Italy, and you have different versions of that, like the Tarochi deck and all of these. They all got it at the same time because they were all interacting with each other. They just had sure. different flavors from different areas, mm-hmm. you know. Just like all of these rituals from the fallen angels, they, they all stem from somewhere, and it links all to this very day. Like when we do the Burning Man ritual, right, mm-hmm. it, it stems right from uh, ancient, we have a rich in ancient Italy. And Italian, uh, if you would call Italian witchcraft or Italian shamanism or mm-hmm. Italian, the ancient Etruscan area, ancient Tuscany, they have a Bafana. And the same thing with Bafana. You make a wooden effigy with Bafana and you put horse chestnuts and straw underneath her and they, and they burn this conical pyre of La Bafana. And, uh, you know, and it's done on the Epiphany holiday of January 6th. Mm-hmm. So, and on the Epiphany holiday... They basically make this purification rites water as well. And they'll, they'll use these rites through this water to, to exercise demons. Mm-hmm. And at the critical points of, of the families, at, at, at all the critical, uh, like the most critical points in time for that family throughout the year, they'll use this sacred water that they create with this, this, uh, with this ritual. And it all comes from these beings, man. It all links back mm-hmm. to the giants and the fallen angels, in my opinion. Okay. So, well, that's cool. I mean, and I, I love learning about these these ideas. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm I'm certainly not uh, trying to be contrary by any measure, but it's just no. Uh, I, I I actually respect that. You yeah. Know, I'm not. I'm not. I would I would hate for someone just to agree with me and say, <laughs> you know, no, it's definitely yeah. true. It's definitely true. I'm just saying, you know, from certain experiences that I've been through and sure. certain things that have happened to me, it led me down the research. And mm-hmm. at first, you know, I went through stages. You know, it started with 
just innocent being interested in like ghost stories and, and fairies and, and things like this when I was younger. You know, there was just more to it. And, and, and I knew that there was something about what I experienced that was related to these topics. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I couldn't get enough of like, uh, you know, I don't know. How old are you, Brandon? I'm in my early, I'm 42. I'm, I'm, 40, I'm 51, wow. actually. How old? 51. Oh wow! So you're a little older than me. Do you, so <laughs> when you were going to school, did you did they have these like book fairs? Oh sure. Where, yeah. Where they would open up these like cabinets of books and yep. for for like a day, right? So yeah. I used to I couldn't wait to like these book fairs to find something about a ghost. Mm-hmm. You know, something about uh, like giants or ghosts or or something like that. Even uh, Jack and the Giant Killer and these stories when I was younger. Uh, you know, sure. Jason and the Argonauts. Mm-hmm. Um, all of these, these Sinbad tales, all of these Clash of the Titans, all of this, these stories, oh. even Beastmaster, the guy was talking to freaking Beast and doing all this, <laughs> all of these things I loved, man, sure. as a kid, I just knew, you know, there was something more to it, and, mm-hmm. um, as I got older, it progressed, it went from, like, being interested in ghost hunting and, and, uh, things like that, it started to progress into, to looking to the origins of where all of this came from, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, and, 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 what it all means and sure. um you know it's today to this very day i believe it, it has to do with what's happening on this planet that these bloodlines are controlling our media and they're controlling our world and they're, they're the elites of the world sure. and that we're we're being designed by these bloodlines and 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 be, being created like hybrid creatures mm-hmm. and we're being entwined with artificial intelligence and um dark violence has been a, a normalcy now on our planet sure. and dark violence of the sexual nature is really goes really deep yeah. and I think that it all stems from these creatures and when we have uh, devices Brent when you have a TV or a computer or a phone or any of these devices that um, especially if numerous people are using a device in the house and you don't know who's doing what on these devices if you're accessing dark violent sexual energy or sexual uh, deviancy, like sexual pornog- por- por- pornography of, of a violent nature, especially, mm-hmm. um, you're creating like a dark portal for these, this, these astral, like, uh, sure. Energies, you know, yeah. these demonic beings right into your home. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. And I you, you have to clear your devices and anoint them yep. and, and be careful of, of where they go. It's like opening up a portal, the artificial intelligence of these dark fallen creatures, sure. these dark ones, we call dark ones. And, uh, you know, they talk about these dark ones in, in these ancient tablets and in the book of Lamech of Cain, in the book of King Og, um, and the book of Giants, all of these, these, the lost book of King Og, and even the Nebuchadnezzar II tablets that were finally released in, in May of 2020, just recently. I just recently got my hands on them. Oh, cool. Um, they, they talk about the Dark Ones, and, and some of these Dark Ones, they, they give this name called the Gontiqua. And the Gontiqua sounds like very Native Native American type of name, and these Gontiqua are a specific type of, like, tribe of Dark Ones mm-hmm. that can literally possess people and, and take them over and become skinwalkers and, and uh, shapeshifters. Uh, wow. You know? So this is, like, where you, you start to find the origins of all demonic activity on our planet, an alien abduction linked to these beings. Like when, uh, you know, you have a, a, an alien or a gray type alien coming from another dimension or another star system with their craft. Their craft is a sort of lab that they're, they're doing genetic experiments in. Sure. And, and, and this is, you know, they're, it's, they're, they're, it's quite possibly they're workers of these, these fallen ones. Mm-hmm. They, they could be some drone type creation or some future creation, you know, from the future coming back and still genetically engineering us. You know, and, and it, it's linked all back to these fallen angels and giants when mm-hmm. you look at it. And, and you know, you, it, it's written right in our history. I mean, it's, yeah. and it's been purposely taken away from us. Giant bones have been found, mm. you know, yeah. all over the planet. Yes. Um, and have, have been hijacked by the Smithsonian, mm-hmm. you know. And all of these uh, these spots that, that are named after giants, you know, people try to... to uh, you know, just say it was mythology. This is history. I mean, yeah. all of these monuments that we have, um, and the Golan Heights that I mentioned, uh, these circles of giants, even right here in mm-hmm. North Salem, New York, right near me, um, they have this megalithic giant cat stone mm-hmm. that they call the Balanced Rock. 
I saw that when you were up there. You did a feed from there, and uh, had, ah. had some really interesting experiences. So we're about a, uh, about thirty seconds out of the break. But when we come back, I'd like to discuss that with you, along with some other dolmens uh, that I ran into when I was over in Montana visiting Duke, and and uh, we're going up to uh, Coloma again in this July, which is where this these dolmens are. So I'd like to have some discussion with you about that because I think that that definitely uh, seems to be a calling card of some giant race. So. Uh, yeah, for sure, brother. We'll That's talk about that. We go there. Absolutely, we will. But uh, we will talk about all that in just a minute. Remember, after the show, stick around for Paisley Wild, the spaces between. And then after that, our very own Duke Sullivan with World Bigfoot Radio on TFR iHeart. Tune in and talk stream live. But we got another hour to go, ladies and gentlemen. So don't go away for more of the Paranormal Portal.
are usually associated with an individual. Hauntings seem to be connected with an area. A house, usually. The guy's disturbances of fairly short duration, perhaps a couple of months. Hauntings can go on for years. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second hour of our show tonight. This is the Paranormal Portal. I am Brent Thomas. We have one hour to go, and I hope you guys are enjoying the ride. For those of you on YouTube, I'm sorry. I understand we're having some crackly audio there, but TFR audio seems to be great. So if you're listening to our broadcast tonight, you may want to go over to tfrlive.com and click on Listen Live. I don't know why that is. I don't know what's going on uh, with this, but it's something I've been trying to chase out of my system for a while. Seemed like it was better, but apparently we were having issues tonight, so I do apologize in advance for that. Um, you know, I I don't know. These quirky it's things It's the information, happen. too, man. It's, it, it's, I, sometimes I think it's the information. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're probably right. And ladies and gentlemen, our guest tonight is Mr. Rock Estaldo, uh, yes. also of tfrlive.com. Thank you for inviting me tonight, Brian. It's always a pleasure. Oh yeah, yeah, brother. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's really uh, incredible because, you know, the shows are only two hours long, but you have a, a knack for packing a hell of a lot of information into two hours and <laughs> you, you really do take well, us know, on a ride. It's because I've, I've done decades of research to, to, to try to give myself explanations of, of, yeah. of what happens, you know, certain things that I've experienced that I know once you experience things and you know, it's real, Yeah. you know, and you know, it's out there and it's like, you need well, I need, I needed answers. You know, I couldn't just, I couldn't just let it be, you know, and that's, mm -hmm. that's how I am with these diggings. And, and before we move on to like the dolmens that you were saying, I just wanted to wrap it two minutes up sure. uh, about what I was talking about with Lilith, because I think it's really important because we have these prophecies that go back in ancient Italy and it, it lines up with the ancient prophecies within Hebrew and ancient Judaism and some of the Kabbalistic texts that I found, especially within, uh, you know, uh, the Hebrew goddess lore of Lilith. And mm -hmm. they talk about how after in the end times, which some people would call the Kali Yuga of Hindu, uh, possibly the times we're in right now, um, that they're after her completion of the raids upon mankind, where she's raiding mankind for their seed killing children, um, doing all of this stuff. Um, after her raids on mankind, Lilith returns to her headquarters, which is the cities deep beneath the sea. Her headquarters are the cities beneath the sea. Mm. And only when ultimate, like when, when Rome, the area of Rome is destroyed, she will return from Rome, uh, from, to return from the headquarters beneath the sea, and she'll return to claim her throne on Rome as a queen of that area. You know, and she'll rise from the Mediterranean Sea and, and, and claim her throne on Rome, waiting for her God and waiting for her, her Antichrist-type figure to meet her on the throne of Rome and, and populate the earth. And this is the prophecies that we have, and it lines up with other cultures as well. So I just wanted to, to throw that out there is that this goes really deep. And um, a couple of years back, I started having these intense visions. Now, I have psychics within my family, mm -hmm. um, even um, within my um, I'm a reverend within a, a certain hereditary line. And my elder, Lori Bruno, my aunt Lori, she's a well-known, world-renowned psychic at a, based out of Boston, um, Salem, Massachusetts area. Um, she has a shop called Magica there. And I had similar visions as her and she's had several visions um starting a couple of years back of giants within a stasis within suspended animation inside of a crystal fortress 
beneath the dormant volcanoes of Rome. All right. Mm. So Rome, people don't realize, Rome sits on volcanic hills, dormant volcanic hills. I don't know if there's seven or eight, but they're dormant volcanoes that Vatican Hill is on. Oh. And there's an Etruscan necropolis down there, a city of the dead that Vatican Hill is built upon. And there's a dormant volcano there. And it's a powerful energy spot, a dark energy spot. And Vatican is actually named after the Etruscan goddess of the death, Vatica. We oh. have a goddess of the death called Vatica, and she, she sees over the dead. And that area is a dormant volcano. And I was having visions that beneath that dormant hill of Rome is a crystal-type fortress where these, these huge angelic-type giant creatures are sitting in suspended animation and stasis. And they had these sort of headsets on. And the headsets were going to their um, like umbilical cords. Uh -huh. And they were in, in, in a stasis. And, and something was happening. And like 20 years ago, I started getting visions. And I even have this tattoo you could see on YouTube mm -hmm. um, with like a hybrid baby with a, a, Headset, a right? headphones going to the umbilical cord underneath the crescent moon. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. it's like an artificial intelligence in the womb. And I was, uh, you know, so I, I it's sort of prophetic. And, and I, you know, I, I feel there's something stored beneath Rome. And the soul, if you go back in, in, in Ugaritic tablets, if you go back in um, Egyptian hieroglyphics, uh, you start seeing that the soul has to be in a container. And for the soul to be visible on this 3D realm, it has to be in some sort of container. Uh, and our body is a container. Just like the god Baal or the bull god, Bull El, maybe his soul was put in the container of a, of a bull. Uh -huh. He was literally like a bull god. It's possible this is what they were doing, transferring souls. The Sphinx and some of these monuments, there were, it might have been soul transfer type uh, technologies there as well. Um, but yeah, so Lilith and all of this, there, 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 there's some prophetic things that are happening with these areas. Mm -hmm. And like I said, with the Virgin Mary, uh, I don't mean to, you know, because I come from a, a background that is a sort of like a combination between Italian mysticism and Roman Catholicism, mm -hmm. uh, sort of entwined together over the years. So uh, I don't mean to disrespect anybody because I come from a family that the Virgin Mary is very popular, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and certain things. But uh, this is all entwined, and they're waiting for a moment for this goddess to rise and mm -hmm. rise from beneath the sea, and she will come upon Rome. And it's it's known, uh, Brent, it's coming. And uh, it's it's happening, and it's been designed this way, and they, they're, they're corrupting mankind. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's happening through the, this, this demonic brood of children that's being created by, by this force, and, and that's why I feel this is a very important topic, and it's related to these dolmens. Sure. I mean, these dolmens are looked at as the gateways of the fairies, the portals of fairies, mm. you know, and, and they're looked at as the creation of giants in all tales. Yeah, and, and I find it really interesting. A lot of people don't know this, and actually Duke kind of plugged me into this, that there are uh, dolmens uh, across America, as well as you did, Ra, when I saw your your video that you shot up there during that cat uh, rock or whatever it's called. Um, I thought yeah. that that was really, really interesting, but... The there seems to be a pretty heavy precedent of these giants in North America. Um, of course, yep. the Lovelock Cave uh, incident. There's lots of uh, First Nations. Yeah. First that's Nations. A, you, you, know, you know that story, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah, course. I think they burned them in there, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah. you know, this, uh, with their double rows of teeth and their red hair again uh, coming they, up. Know, in the Bible, they talk about how they're a certain clan of the Rephaim are the six fingers. They have six fingers, you know, 24 in all. Oh, you know, six, okay. Six, six, that's, a, that's how they describe it in the Bible. You know, six, uh, six on each hand and six on the on the feet, so 24 in all. And they had double rows of teeth. And King Og slept on this huge bed of iron, like 15 feet, you mm -hmm. know, uh, or copper or something. It was this huge bed that they talk about. And, uh, yeah, man. So it, it, it's really intense when you see these dolmens. And the one, that, that area... Uh, that that I went to that that you saw that live feed is is one of the most I mean it's and, and you know what's weird hmm. Brent just in the last couple months uh, after you know I've been talking about this place for a few years now mm -hmm. and I've known about it since I'm a kid and uh, the la like three months ago Ancient Aliens did an episode featuring that rock oh really and, wow. and you know the guy in the in the episode I actually shared information with him about you know, five or six years ago. 
on this on this rock. So the guy Hugh, the guy Hugh that they interview in in the episode. Uh -huh. So like, uh, you know, they don't. They, of course, they don't mention my name or give me any credits or ever. But <laughs> but sure. uh, the guy, you know, I shared information with him, and he was well. He he went and visited the rock and 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 interviewed it. You know, prior to me, he knew about the rock prior to me talking about it. But I gave him information that he didn't have prior to that and they included that in the episode like uh -huh. i was talking about how i felt there's a vortex of energy beneath there and how i feel there's underground water beneath there and literally when i touched the this this rock and, and before i jump ahead let me describe it to your audience real quick if yes. you're not understanding it. right in uh, north salem new york which is about 30 40 miles outside of manhattan um westchester county new york uh, it's on a ley line. You could feel the energy. Uh, I'm sure if dowsers went and did dowsing rods, they would be able to feel this, the ley line of that area. Mm -hmm. uh, you could feel it. I'm pretty sure there's probably caverns beneath that area. But right on the side of the road, it's like on the side of the road now. You know, there's a road right there. It's right <laughs> sitting on the side of the road. It, like, hits you out of nowhere. You'll feel a little bit of energy as you're going down the street. Like, you're almost anticipating something, and then all of a sudden it hits you. You, you It's right there on mm -hmm. the side of the road. And it's literally... 60 to 100 tons of red granite. Yes. And, you know, there's no red granite nowhere near that area. Mm -hmm. And it's balancing on a circle of smaller stones. Like, there's these smaller stones that almost look like fingers of giants coming out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And almost like they're like a little pedestal. And they're, they're little, little, little stones with this massive 90 ton granite rock balancing, almost barely touching the corners of the smaller stones, mm -hmm. you know, balancing on it. And it's, it's truly like a, a, a multi-dimensional anchor of energy sitting on that spot. And somewhat, it feels like an anchor of energy on a specific ley line spot. And uh, there's, a, there's a local street nearby that, that's related to giants called uh, uh, too as well. So there's, it's, there's, there's lore of that area of Native Americans and, and giants. And um, this thing is in the shape of a feline type cat head. Yeah, it looks the the face is is either molded to look like a, a feline type hat, and it has a uh, a headdress on it mm -hmm. that looks like either uh, an Egyptian or Nubian or some type of ancient Etruscan even headdress mm -hmm. that goes down. And uh, you know this 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 uh, I have a lot of theories of what these headdresses could be. They could be even technology. Uh, even look very similar to the headsets that I saw on the giants in my vision even. And, um, you know, red granite is another mystery, Rex. And a lot of the dolmens and um, ancient obelisks that yes. we have, I've been writing a book this last year about obelisks, and uh, I got almost 400 pages done so far. Oh, good for you. And I've done psychic viewings at obelisks. We even have an obelisk right here in New York City, an ancient Egyptian obelisk that they call Cleopatra's Needle. Mm. And I've touched red granite, especially this this cat stone that they call the balanced rock in North Salem, New York. And what came to me was flashes of living giants, living creatures. That red granite was once live flesh. Mm. And I believe that this cat stone, this balanced rock in North Salem, was once an organ that's petrified. And I believe it was a heart. And uh -huh. if you look around the, the back of it, and the, the front of it and all, it, it, it's almost the shape of a heart. And I believe the heart was molded to look like the giant creature that it was once a part of. Mm. And it was once, once a part of this giant cat-like feline-type creature. Even in ancient Egyptian, you had feline-type gods. Oh, sure. Know, Ra, the, goddess, the god Ra had, had uh, uh, Tefnut and, 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 and uh and Shu and Tefnut, his his children were were feline type humanoids, yep. and uh, so there's there's lore of these creatures, like an Vast. ancient uh, Lemurian Atlantis sort of, you know, there there could have been these feline type giants, mm -hmm. and uh, it quite possibly this might have been a heart at one time. And red granite is highly concentrated with crystals; it's littered with crystals throughout all of it. Right? There's no free metals in it, right? So, so it's like somebody extracted the metals out. And and created this, like spun it, and 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 sort of like molded it. Even with the obelisk, it, it it's almost like they have these long granite obelisks that they were almost molded and and almost like uh put like a, a sort of molding around it. And, and 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 when it was still like flesh that was soft, it mm. didn't petrify and harden yet. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, use some sort of hardening technology or some sort of technology to make it hard. That's why we have sort of, sort of things in like Peru where these, these rocks look like they're molded together. I believe at one time they were like mud fossils sort of. They were, uh -huh. they were. Uh, you mean like Puma Punka and stuff? Yeah, dude. Yes, yeah. That the one time they were just molded into place, mm -hmm. you know, like molded. That they were they were wet and soft and a lot lighter, you yes. know, and and not harder yet, you know. They were like play doh, clay. They mm -hmm. were once flesh, and, and these giants were doing experiments with this stuff and, and working with it. And that's where red granite, I believe, comes from. It, 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 I'm not the only person that has this theory. Some of the mainstream guys won't admit this now because mainstream. Uh, academia will laugh at you and they will, they will there's no way that, that this oh, was once sure. alive or you know they don't want to go there but uh, my buddy from mud fossil university roger who, who's uh got a big following now mm -hmm. um i shared the information with him that i thought this about this red granite and he he, he agrees with me and this guy um is is really not he's more in, he's really into the mud fossil thing mm -hmm. and so if you guys if you don't think it's a, it's a theory, look at it. There's there's quite possible that the land that we're living on are mud fossils, you know, and it's mm -hmm. uh, it's petrified living creatures that, that came down into this realm and hardened, or, or like dragons, sure. you know, that's, that's, that mountains are made out of. Right. You know, and, and I find it interesting. Uh, a lot of people don't know that these dolmens are around, but there are several in North America. And, yeah. of course, the as I was stating before, and there's... The there's there's a lot in New England. Oh, sure. And then the one that we saw was in Montana. And, and as far as I know, according to Duke, that's pretty much un, unacknowledged, but he's got uh, he's been uh, instrumental in trying to get that acknowledged as a, as a dolmen. And when you go up there, uh, you know, if you, if you ever get a chance, I'll, I'll, I'll send you some images that I have of it. But it, it's very clearly uh, been fabricated. And these are huge granite slabs that are, you know, almost, yeah. almost like rudimentary uh, daggers of granite that are just jutting wow. out of the ground uh, at a right angle in a in a very in a very uh, circular fashion. And in the middle of this is like uh, one that's flat. It looks like almost like an altar. It is really bizarre, and uh, you can tell that people have been up there doing stuff on that altar as well. Anyway, but. Uh, I was fascinated by that. Um, obviously, there had to have been something very big that put those into place. You know, I mean, they weren't just, uh, well, some people like to try to hypothesize the glaciation and stuff, but but I, I don't. Well, that's what they tried to say at first with this North Salem rock, that it was a glacial erratic. Yeah. And, and, you know, and then years, then finally they, they wrote, they put a sign there that says now it's a dolmen possibly from, you know, you know, the, you know, uh, what they, I think they say Vikings or, or something. I forget what they, they say, but now they now they call it a dolmen. You know, but at first they said it was a glacial erratic. There's, I mean, and it's possible. And ice, the ice age can plot, but not like this. Right. Like, yeah. And, and not this this stone that, that clearly resembles uh, a head of a giant or so, just the head of a big creature. Yes. You know. Yeah. And we have uh, another similar stone in. Uh, I think it's. Not the Overlook Mountains. Uh, I forget the name of the mountains now. In uh, in New England, there's another stone that looks exactly like it, Rex. Uh, the exact almost face and everything. This one looks like almost like a a, a cross between a gorilla and a feline like type face. Mm. That same face. Okay. And uh, I'll, I'll send you pictures of it. But it's 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 the exact same shape and everything. And it's it's you know probably like a hundred miles away from that one. Wow. Well, you know, my my question is. Uh, now the, and I'd like to get into this in the in the last half hour of the show, but there are still reports of people seeing these giants walk around. Um, I, I I know there's only a handful of reports that I've heard personally, but these are not uh, these these are people that change their entire lifestyle because of it. One was an old hunter who refuses to go hunt anymore because when he was up in his tree stand, he saw like a fifteen or twenty foot red haired guy walk through the forest uh, just away from him and walk straight, <laughs> straight up a mountain. Uh, he will not hunt anymore. Um, this is not just a whim or a flight of fancy. This is a lifelong hunter that won't go into the woods anymore. So uh, I give that quite a bit of credibility and credence. And, you know, where are they if they are here? Do you think they're a subterranean species or, or what could be going on? You know, I think they're they're sort of like nocturnal in a way too. Mm. You know, 
it might be, and, and they, they come out in the day only when they're disturbed or someone comes near their, their, their area or something like that. And, you know, if you, if you go back in lore, they, they also talk about how they have eyes that glow, mm-hmm. glowing eyes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it can have, like, eyes of fire. And there's been reports of them, you know, uh, in, in Italy, even in the 1970s and 1980s, where these college students, um, had a, they, they, they witnessed a UFO coming down. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing you know, it was I think it was in Sterno, Italy, 1977 or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. Sterno, Italy, um, where these uh, S T U R N O, Sterno. Um, I, I think that uh, college, this group of college students saw it like a UFO come down, and then these this giant all of a sudden appeared with glowing eyes that had them like uh, sort of like frozen, where they couldn't move. They were mm-hmm. like stuck. In, in a trance, and, mm. and it didn't hurt them or anything, but they were like, there's, there was something taking place, that they were stuck in a tra- trance, and, you know, when you, when you go back into the lore of these giants, uh, Brent, they have tales of clans of them, and uh, in the Lost Book of King Og, they talk about how there was a hundred thousand giant war, where all of these clans of giants were at war, and they were at war with Nimrod and his groups of giants and all of these other kinds of giants. And there was, for two specific reasons in, in these documents. One was because of the death of the moon child. King Og and Queen Lestha. And Queen Og in the Bible is the last of the Rephaim. Who, right. who, and he survived the flood. He had this, this wife, Queen Lestha, who was this red-headed giant woman who was able to give birth. But the last birth she gave almost killed her, left her bedridden for 10 years. Right. And they talk about her. And uh, there was, so they resorted to sorcery to try to give, uh, make a moon child so she, so she can give birth again, Queen Lester, so her womb can, can have a baby, right? Mm-hmm. So they, they do, they, they pray to Baal or Baal or however you want to say it, Baal, and they do this whole sex magic ritual to bring uh, Queen Lesta a moon child. And Nimrod helped cause the death of this moon child. And so they go to war, and it was also over circumcision. Now, they talk about in these lost book of King Og how Nimrod was battling these giants. And in battle, his foreskin got cut, and it was half hanging off, and he, and he removed the rest. Oh. And... <laughs> Um, so nobody could recognize him on the on the floor of the battle to see if he died. He made the, all of his clans of giants circumcise themselves just like him, so they all looked similar on the oh. battlefield when they were dead. He made everybody circumcise themselves. King Og and his clans of giants considered this sacrilegious, considered this an abomination to disfigure your sexual organ like that. And this was one of the main reasons why they went to war. And, you know, and, and, and they say this is why these documents have been kept hidden from us was because it's, it's the true origin of circumcision. Mm-hmm. Very uh, interesting points. Um, I did have a quick question. We got like two minutes before the break, but uh, yeah, one, of, one of our people, people in, the, in the YouTube chat, uh, Titan, asked, if you've heard of anything about the giants working with the giant trees. Well, like the like the the cedars of Lebanon. Yeah, or I don't know. I I, I assume that it could be the redwoods, the cedars. Um, yeah, anywhere. Yeah, I mean, so this goes all the way back to Titans and stories of uh, Jason and the Argonauts, mm-hmm. and uh, certain like Dundera Temple, right? There's people have heard of the Delphi Temple of Delphi in ancient Greece. Well, there's also sure. the Temple of Dendera. And Dendera had this cybernetic wood that they used in this, in these, on the that they even used on the Argus, which was like the wood of the giants, the cedar that they used from these cedars of Lebanon. They would they would be able to do a fusion between artificial intelligence type energy and wood to create this like cybernetic timber, this self-propelling uh, uh, timber that was like uh, uh, atomic, like in in a way. And, and it's like, and it, and it was sentient, and, and it was, uh, and they used the cedars of Lebanon and some sort of technology, and they talk about it in, in, in ancient writings in Greece, and this goes back to the tales of the Titans and, and Jason and the Argonauts and, and his Argus ship, you know, so, sure. yeah, I mean, uh, even, you know, there was this, 
this monk that is, he's called a saint now in the Catholics, uh, Saint Charbel. Saint Charbel was from Lebanon. And he worked heavily with these cedars that are, are you know, diminished now. I know we're coming down to a break in a few seconds. Yep. But when he died, uh, and he resurrected the dead, the saint. He's one of the saints that resurrected the dead. Same with the Virgin Mary. A lot of people don't know. There's a lot of resurrections from the dead associated with it. But when Saint Charbel died, his body remained incorrupt. And these cedars, they, they, they don't decay very easily. They're very hard to burn as well. They, they sustain fire. They use cedars to, to heat the forges of samurai swords and swords that they would make for blacksmith. They would use the cedars to heat the forge. Uh -huh. well, they're magical. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're at the last break of the night. One half hour left to go with Mr. Rock Estaldo right here on the Paranormal Portal. So don't go away for the last segment of our show. We'll be right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is our last half hour. It's gone so quickly, as it always does when we got Ron on the show with me. Uh, we go, we fly, we we just fly right through this. Uh, we are discussing giants tonight, and we've been uh, on an epic, epic journey. Uh, you know, it's it's actually uh, to the tune of Plato, if I do say so myself, Ron. You, you've brought us through the ancient world in, in a, a really cool journey uh, of idea and possibility and I want to make sure to spend at least part of the show uh, this last part talking about the phenomena as it exists today or you know that they are possibly still out there people are possibly still running into these beings these creatures and uh, what does that mean? Do you think that maybe that's a foreshadowing of the return that you're talking about? Or what are your thoughts on this? Um, also, another person, the, the story that I was referring to, I actually heard uh, on Sasquatch Chronicles years ago. Somebody was talking about well, that's it. that's the whole thing in itself. Sasquatch might be a hybrid Nephilim type, sure. you know, right. giant Raphaim. Sure. Creature, you know? <laughs> but the, the other one was actually a friend of, of Duke's that has seen uh, one of these things, uh, and uh, he's, he's from the South. He's a, a Native American gentleman, but he saw one. And so, I mean, this is still a phenomenon that's occurring to this day. It's not like this is some historical footnote, and that's what I find so absolutely amazing and yet disturbing. I think it's, it's kind of frightening to think that there's these huge things that could pop up anywhere. You know? Yeah, well, it seems to be progressing and accelerating as, uh, along with our technology as as these spiritual creatures sort of accelerate and enter into our atmosphere and progress. So does our, our technology and, and the knowledge and, and the interest in these beings. I mean, the gi- giants and all this knowledge has always been there. It's always been there, but it's only, you know, resurfaced and become really more popular over these last few years. And people have been coming in, I mean... Even the Bigfoot thing, it's because it's 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 it used to be taboo. Now it's everywhere. You know, Sasquatch, all this, even dogmen. It's I mean, people. It's like a common thing now. That used to be the most, you know, common. Now you know, you could talk to somebody at shop right. They might even know what sinocephaly is, and nobody knew what what these terms were you right. know, or anything before. And, and it used to be only people that would research, uh, you know. The deep topics would, would come across these names, and, and the average person wouldn't, wouldn't be interested in them. Now it's all over. Sitcoms, you know, these fake shows on TV about this stuff, and, and I mean, it's everywhere. So it's it's because it's returning. It's be returning in a new way, and, it, and I, I don't feel there was ever an extinction of these beings. They just, you know, they, 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 they went asleep, or they went in hiding, or uh, they, they, they were almost completely removed. Mm-hmm. possibly from our world and they went in hiding and they were waiting a rebirth and that, i think that's the way our our world has been manipulated now through mainstream the media everything is related to their bloodlines i, I do believe mm-hmm. that there is a conspiracy uh that that's actually true history and you know what, what so what some people would call like a conspiracy within uh like genesis 6 like my buddy gary has this book called genesis 6 conspiracy gary Wayne, who i have on my show about once a month as we go through all these topics, it's like you like you see tonight, I'm unloading information on you, and we're only just scratching the surface, yeah, you know, of, of what's out there, you know. Uh, so there's uh, there's there's so much to get into about these topics, and it is accelerating, and it's it's right there uh, happening right. And I think I, that, that we're being changed. Our very DNA, who we are, are being changed by the knowledge and spiritual technology and knowledge of these of these beings of these creatures and sure. we're being herded like cattle and it's it's happening now so you know? here's 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 my my idea of this in a nutshell and i i you know I, I can only tell you that i'm coming from an intuitive place on this for the most part but i think you're right i think there is there does seem to be a very worldly uh energy or intelligence that's working to counteract or or to slow down our natural progression our natural uh elevation or um uh, ascension of sorts uh, and connection to our higher dimensional yes. self again yeah. yeah it's like there's there seems to be almost an intelligence to it to keep us keep us divided to keep us angry to keep us in these base emotions whereas you know i think that we are all feeling extra agitated because 
this doesn't fit anymore. This doesn't fit us anymore. We are, we are these, uh, becoming these elevated consciousnesses uh, compared to where we were. And our natural progression is to, you know, understand more, to, you know, vibrate higher, vibrate a yeah. little brighter. And it does seem like there is this, this end game going on in some fashion to keep people planted on the ground to keep them from yeah, well, we've this. been we've been thrown we've been thrown into a lower dimension you know and and we we lost connection to our higher dimensional self and to get back to our spiritual evolution and spiritual progression and connection to our higher self you know it, it's going to be a war because we've been removed from it you know in a weird way and it's interesting because even the the, the term nephilim right mm -hmm. uh nephil in hebrew that that term comes from the term to abort or to have like a fallout mm. uh, or an abortion, like a cosmic abortion. Mm. Okay. Uh oh, we might have lost him. Uh, uh, yeah. oh, are you back? You lost me? No, you just locked up again. We, we're just having weird latency tonight. Uh, it's been so good. What I was saying was the, the term Nephilim, uh, the actual term Nephil, like any F I L, Nephil. It, it means in ancient Hebrew is to abort mm -hmm. or to fall out. So it's almost like a cosmic abortion. Mm -hmm. These these beings were thrown cosmically, like aborted, like uh, uh, ancient star material or a cosmic abortion like that, thrown into a lower realm, you know, like a cosmic abortion. They were like cosmic debris that was uh, thrown into a lower realm. And that's what the, the Nephilim term comes from, like to abort. Mm hmm well, that's interesting. Uh, you know, I, I do find that incredibly compelling as well, the whole Nephilim and, and, and this whole ideology behind uh, their creation as an abomination of sorts. And, you know, I, 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 don't, I, you know, I don't know that I, I have my hand really too well on the pulse of all of that because I, I find those, those ideas to be um, awkward to me, but it's just because I guess I haven't looked into them very hard. You know, I'm, I'm, you're, you're, you're about 15 layers deep into this and I'm like just scratching the surface, you know, <laughs> so. and the, the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know, but I can tell you this just to, to say how real this stuff is mm -hmm. just the, the very research of it, right. It brings activity to you. I mean, uh, there's, there's some things that I have seen even within my dreams that are so horrific that it's undescribable how real it is as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and I have I use certain spiritual tools that I, I have created a barrier around my house. And listen to this: I did a remote viewing uh, not too long ago, and I had a literal barrier that was like a couple of hundred yards away from my house that I saw, where these lined up tall beings with stringy hair were mm -hmm. like waiting at the barrier. Because there was like a line of energy, like a protection, like a that that a field of influence that went a certain way around my area that I live, and and they were like lined up just waiting for me. It was the weirdest thing, and uh, you know we have uh, all of these tales of, of even in in Malta, Sardinia, all of these places of, of giants to this very day that exist in caverns beneath the ground, and uh, you know I I. Uh, my website is themysticalspiral.com, and even at patreon.com slash themysticalspiral, I put this info on a daily basis on there about this. And, you know, I, I create certain spiritual tools um, with copper uh, that are designed to protect us from, from certain vibrations and, and certain dark energies, even like uh, these Atlantean bracelets that I just made. Like, you could wear them as, as bracelets, as, like, copper bracelets, but they also transform into, like, uh, a sphere of energy, a copper sphere of energy, like this. Mm. You know, they transform into the sphere of energy, if you can see on YouTube. Um, that they, they, they can put a field of influence up to a mile. Uh, you could program intentions within this field of energy and, and protect your, your area and protect your dream time, protect things. Because just knowledge of these beings, talking about them, researching them, trying to find information about them, it brings it to you. It, it, it's right. sort of like uh, you got to be, you know, protected protect yourself from it at all times and and re be really respectful with certain things because there there's certain things that i that that have happened to me that is like almost indescribable horrific things that i've seen and uh if you check out 
and research the origins of fertility cults and mm -hmm. people that are into black magic and sex magic. It all links back to these creatures. Mm -hmm. You know, John D was talking to these creatures, fallen angels, giants, and all of these angels. Even Aleister Crowley from 1920 to 1923, Aleister Crowley was in Italy. He was in Sicily. And he set up his Abbey, Abbey of Thelema. And it was dedicated to the fertility between the gods to create the giants, to create this demonic brood of children, to create moon children. He had these murals painted in his Abbey of Thelema depicting the horned god having sex rituals, like evil sex rituals with the mother goddess. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Italian authorities kicked Aleister Crowley out in like 1923, they forced him to leave Sicily because of, and they, they had to whitewash some of these walls because of the stuff that were, they were doing there. I mean, the most hideous of sexual acts um, to these these creatures that, 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 you know, that I think the sex magic and all of this stuff, you know, like I said, even earlier, we, I mentioned the dark pornography. This all stems, I believe, from these creatures. And it's to, to uh, continue and, and start a hybrid race. They're, 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 you're creating portals to yourself and changing your very DNA by welcoming these things in. And this is how they're surviving to this day. And there might be physical ones out there walking, but they're not physical in the sense that we are. They are able to walk between worlds. They are spirit beings as well. They are like disembodied spirits as well. So they can, they can travel through dimensions and not only be unseen, uh, they can also be seen. And they can materialize into matter. So there, there's some other creature that we can't fully understand or comprehend currently, and and it does exist on this planet because I have witnessed it myself. You know, when I was younger, there's knowledge within Italian mysticism within my family of these fallen angels. We call them the Gregori, mm -hmm. and the Gregori basically are watchers. Um, in, in ancient Persia, they talk about them like uh, they're they're the eyes of the night, they're the stars, literally the, the, eye, the constellations, they're, they're literally like part of the constellation, they're, they're star knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. So these Grigori, they watch over stargates, but they also are the, the they, 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 they're the ones that put magic into our realm, they watch over magic. So if anybody casts a magic spur, uh, uh, circle or participates in magic or even pr like does a prayer or some sort of, sort of like self, ritual like sometimes when you're praying please let this happen or please let that certain intentions are like spells they're there watching they're, they're they, they get drawn to that spiritual energy that you generate and they watch over stargates and portals on this planet and when i was younger i had knowledge of these beings um and i for somehow just knew that if i st stood in certain postures and did certain hand gestures in front of the mirror that they would come on and really? I tried this when I was in middle school oh, and, and literally had these creatures talking to me through the mirror. Oh, and no. it was, it was the most creepiest thing as you can imagine. And it's not a coincidence that my teenage years up until my early twenties were some of the hardest problems I've ever experienced in my life from drugs to, you know, the, the problems with my family to mm -hmm. this. And I, I didn't want to be around people. I was like very individualistic and I was like lost in my music and lost in the drugs and doing this and doing that. I was like really, really crazy stuff happened in, in, in those years. And it's not a coincidence that just prior to that, I had interaction with these otherworldly creatures. And, and you know, I, 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 I had uh, an, an experience. I don't know if I ever told on your show I don't in know. 2002. Where I, I literally met some sort of demon in person right on the street. Oh, yeah, you um, did. You talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, who knows where this comes from and, and what's going on to this day, you know? So, it's uh, it, it's, it's intense. And, you know, Aleister Crowley has a book called Moonchild that he wrote a novel. Okay. You know, and, and Jack Parsons and Marjorie Cameron uh, were trying to create a Moonchild. And they people fell to... Uh, include the information of where this moon child information actually comes from. It comes from the giants. It comes from King Og. It comes from the sorcery of Baal and, 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 and all of these ancient beings. And, you know, they have another one called Nama, who was basically the, the daughter of Lamech. And Nama was laying with the fallen angels. He was 
having sex and fornicating with the sons of God, that they called them. And she was the mother of giants, and she was creating, she, she was like uh, giving birth to giants, they say. So um, it, it's within our history, it's, it's happening to this very day, and, and in fact, if you look deep enough, Nama ends up becoming Noah's wife later on, and Noah has no idea about her prior uh, laying with giants. Really? <laughs> yeah, oh my they God. talk about, uh, and these, yeah, they were found with the Dead Sea Scrolls, and they talk about it. Um, in in all of these ancient tablets that have just recently been released over the last few years, and they were they were kept hidden from us, and uh, yeah, uh, Nama her her name is spelled N A A M A H Nama, and okay. she was like strikingly beautiful, and uh, she would sing, and and they talk about her in uh, the Book of Lamech of Cain, and uh, it's really like a, a controversial book. Um, it was released by the Vatican, approval by the Vatican through certain Catholic priests and, and certain priests um, that have dedicated their lives to the Dead Sea Scrolls mm-hmm. were found in Qumran in the 1940s. And these books have been released over the last few years. And they talk about Nama. And there's always been knowledge of Nama, Nama and Lilith. But this goes into deeper detail of Nama. And they talk about how she was like uh, passed around by these giants, by these Rephaim. Wow. And she um, later on like changed her ways and becomes the wife of Noah. Noah has no idea of her prior laying with giants, and she because he wanted a woman that was pure, and good. <laughs> and uh, they even talk about her in the book of the book of Lamech of Cain. They they call her. They say that she is like a deep ditch in a narrow pit, and she laid with many giants. And they had her. Bl- ju- bl- uh, she was in the, in the the town square. Dr- drunk on the blood of, of giants that they served to her in these ornate chalices oh, and that they talk about so she was drinking blood um doing these blood rituals with these giants these rephaim and and these sex rituals are related to these dolmens and these these stone circles all over the world and, and it related to stonehenge so this you know, is all sex magic this is all pre-flood this is all pre-flood stuff though right well, it's post flood as well. I mean, uh, I I think that uh, we have fertility cults and that and all of these uh, things that have has survived, you know, mm-hmm. and and the knowledge has survived and it, and it's and it's continued. I mean, uh, King Og supposedly survived the flood, and King Og had all of the knowledge of the sorcery. He was not just a king; he was a temple priest and the ultimate of warriors. Mm-hmm. And just like uh, the Highlander. You have to cut the head of the giant to assume the power of their energy and, and actually kill them. Mm-hmm. And you have to behead them. So this is like the tale of where the Highlander gets that knowledge from and, and all of that. That uh, King Og was the ultimate of warrior and, and cut the head off many of many of giants. Mm. And uh, he survived the flood and that knowledge survived the flood. And all of these fertility cults that have uh, trickled down. Uh, is 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 the survival of this all of these sacred groves where there's uh, all this fertility even uh my family from italy from the area of lake nemi there's that the, that whole area was known to be a sacred grove of where where the giants would have sex there was a giant linked to that area called verbius and he was the you know the guardian of the forest so there's there's tales in every culture you know the far east the the near east you know all over mm. That's intense. It's a global phenomenon for sure. Um, I don't know, brother. It's 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 such a bucket full of of interconnecting lines and 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 dots and and it's full of intrigue and and confusion in a lot of ways too. Because I I think I think it's very unique that you've managed to pull so much of this together into one cohesive chain. Because it sounds like you're drawing from several areas yeah. in, in formation of your ideology and your theory on this. And I think that that's, that's impressive all by itself because if you've got the patience and the intelligence to dig through all of this old stuff and then to make a cohesive line, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're heads and shoulders above me because um, it just it, it becomes so overwhelmingly complex um, and with... And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that that no, it's just. I understand you. Thank you. No, it's a, it's a it's a compliment. I, I get yeah. it. Thank you. I appreciate it. But it's you know it's 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 because, um, you know, 
I'm not saying I'm um, a rocket scientist or you know the, the most smartest man in the world, but I have sure. I had a high IQ at a young age when I was tested, and you know I was always in higher classes, and they wanted me to go to private schools and and all of that, but I stayed in public school, and I always had a higher intelligence, uh, you know, mm-hmm. for for certain things, for music, for certain things I like, for even sports and martial arts, certain things that I just got drawn to and got. When I get drawn to something, I go all in, <laughs> even if it even if it kills me. Sure. Even if it kills me. Yeah, I can and, tell. Uh, you know, so when 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 I went when I was being going through my troubled years, you know, I was all in. I was crazy, you know. But when I you know when I went into my music, you know, I go all in. And, and when I went into research, I went all. In. Even when I went into Muay Thai, you mm-hmm. know, I ended up having two pro fight pro fights. I went out to Thailand. I did a thirty day camp out in Thailand. I spent some time in Brazil. And uh, I, I did a few pro fights in Muay Thai in the late '90s, early 2000s. So, like when I went, when I go all in, I go all in. And uh, you know, this this certain activity and certain things that happened to me that I knew that there there was unseen forces out there that I needed I needed some answers for. Yeah. And all of these years of research, you know, from from ghosts to fairies to all, it all leads back to giants and fallen angels, in my opinion. Mm. and otherworldly higher dimensional creatures you know and that are that we're linked to that our very dna and genetic memory and ancestral memory is linked to that's why when a child hears dinosaurs or giants it's like it sparks something like yeah. something awakens within sure. you it's a the knowledge of it awakens and you know the world has been progressing because we're coming through this end times when i was talking about what's going to happen to rome and the goddess and, and the giants are going to return to that area. That's all real. Uh, you know, the, and, and all of this is happening right before our eyes. Mm. And it's, it's happening right now, and, and you can see it. And we're, we're at a, a, a very important and, and interesting time in mm. human history, one of the most important times that we're ever going to experience in human history. And it's very important that people understand who they are and the powerful that uh, being that they are because the very energy that we call the Newman energy that it's spelled N-U-M-E-N Newman energy it's like the 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 spirit that's in everything you know everything that's in inanimate objects and animate objects everything has this positive and negative spirit energy within it the artificial intelligence the 5G all of these harmful radiation microwaves all of this EMF all of these uh, energies that we're being bombarded with in every direction they're sucking that energy from us. It's taking our ancestral memory from us and our higher dimensional connection to our higher self. They're, they're, they're sucking it out of us. And the only way that we're going to get that back is through using certain things like these tensor tools and orgone pyramids and certain free energy to battle that. How do they get a hold of them? How do they get a hold of your tensor tools and stuff? Oh, yeah. So, uh, and you know, you don't have to get them from me. You can find them in any other place. But for my specific ones, you can find at mysticalspiral.com slash store. Um, or you can contact me on Facebook. You can contact me anywhere. Uh, but I have the store at themysticalspiral.com. No www, just themysticalspiral.com. Or if you mm-hmm. want to go straight to the store, mysticalspiral.com slash store. I also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash themysticalspiral, of course. You know, I'm here on, on Truth Frequency Radio every Saturday night from 7 to 9 Eastern. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's it's happening. Rex, we're, I mean, uh, Brent, sorry, I keep calling you Rex. It's <laughs> happening. We, uh, we're we coming to a, uh, there's a, there's, we're coming to a very specific yes. point in time. I agree. Where uh, yeah. the timelines are collapsing. Our timeline is changing every day. There's some sort of manipulation mm-hmm. happening to our world. And yeah. there's a new world arising every day. It's being formed a little bit by a little bit each moment. Yeah. And a new world is rising. And, you know, it, it goes back in prophet, prophecy. If you look in, they, they talk how a, a, a one world religion will rise on the planet. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and this, is, this is what we're being brought towards. And unfortunately, um, you know, we're, we're going to see some dark times. But uh, with we live in a, a realm of duality. We live in a world of duality. So yeah. as much dark that can generate is as much equal positivity that can generate. Yeah. So we got to think about that. That is, as light. dark as things can get, it can get equally as good. Yeah. So both will be generated. It's who you get polarized towards. And it's up to us to polarize towards the good and, and yeah. to make it. So 
there's there's no way that you can compromise your morals and you right. could stand firm like that tribal tree and mm-hmm. that's what we need to do in life is is take root and, and really stand firm to our beliefs and not be compromised by the dark thoughts. Because I do believe these ancient giants, they seep into our minds as disembodied spirits, and they slowly pollute your mind with dark thoughts. Mm-hmm. And it's up to us to battle that. Thank you for having me. Brent. Absolutely, it's brother. Really Ladies and gentlemen, stick around for Paisley Wild coming up next. And later on, TFR iHeart, tune in to talk stream. The Duke with World Bigfoot Radio will be on, and he is talking to Jim the Bear King tonight. So stick around. I love you all. Be good, be kind, be nice, take care of each other, help each other out, find the magic in every day, and remember to laugh as much as you can. Ross, stick on that. Hold on to Skype for a minute, if you would, brother. You got it, brother. All love right. You, good, good night, everybody. We'll be right back. Or someone will be back. <laughs>